I thought his story about the pros and cons of windmills, wind power, would be pretty harmless. Not in your life. Even before we started filming, the industry was mobilising. A message went out from the Australian Wind Energy Association asking supporters to help stop this story. Well, sorry folks, wind power might be promoted as an answer to global warming, a cheap, environmentally friendly source of electricity, but it's causing one hell of a stink in once peaceful little communities. So far, the industry is not generating much power, but it's certainly generating plenty of heat. Around the world, in some of the most beautiful places, they're appearing. In the green coastal hills of Victoria's Gippsland, along the blustery western ridgelines of Britain, and the storm-tossed clifftops of northwest Tasmania, towering turbines are sprouting everywhere. And, according to many environmentalists, they are far from clean and green. Why are you importing these bits and pieces, sticking them up in the air and looking at wonderful phallic symbol, it's green. It's not green at all. There is nothing green about this landscape and there's nothing green about these weapons of mass destruction because basically that's what they are. British environmentalist Professor David Bellamy once campaigned to save the Franklin River. Now he's back in Australia, this time tilting at windmills. Look, there is a perceived energy crisis. Here is something perceptible, something concrete. Something perceptible, but something contrary to common sense. This wind farm at Tura in Victoria's South Gippsland is the first of many planned for this lovely coastline. When the wind's blowing, and only when the wind's blowing, these 12 turbines can provide electricity for up to 9,000 homes. But according to Professor Bellamy, they're a blight on the landscape. Because they do chop up birds, because they do spook back, because they do reduce the value of property and they screw up the tourist industry. That's what really gets up my nose. But they're really the thing that they don't work. They don't produce enough electricity to make it worthwhile to stuff the landscape and stuff people's lives. Basically, we've been terrorised by these things since they've been up. Terrorised? Terrorised, that's, all, that's, the way, that's the only way I can put it. Steve and Jane Garrito live next door to the Tura turbines, and they say their intimidating giant presence and incessant low-pitched hum has destroyed their dream of a sea change in these rolling green hills. It's the dripping tap, just causing stop. Yeah, so we've... That noise is there 24 hours a day, this infrasound. Now, it was used in Nazi Germany in the Second World War as an instrument of torture because it, it is such a depressing, monotonous, continual, overriding beat. You cannot escape it. The Gritos' lives are now in limbo. They say they can't sell their cottage because its value has plummeted since the wind farm, but they can't live with it either. Then there's the added stress of a nasty intimidation campaign sparked by their opposition to the turbines. If um, the shed's been threatened to be burnt down, I've received a death threat in the mail. So it has divided the community? Yes, most definitely. Is there a problem? Just how divided this community has become, I was about to find out. Well, you've got no right, have you? No right. Put that fucking thing down! No, no, it's not to be like that. We'll there is. No, we'll down the road no from the Garitos, one of their neighbours took exception to our unauthorised look at the wind turbines that have so upset the young couple. Now you're obviously upset, we'll go. Of course I'm fucking upset. Put that fucking thing down! No, we'll, we'll leave. This is we a measure of the anger that now pervades the entire South Gippsland. The turbines are being built on farmland by power companies willing to pay substantial rents. 
but only landholders hosting the turbines get anything out of it, and that's made a lot of their neighbours very angry. Flog them, beat them, write one letter, write two letters, write six. Call, which causes yeah. cancer Cutting and off. kills people Cutting in off. the Latrobe Valley. The prospect of many more turbines dominating the entire coastline is further inflaming feelings. What's it going to do? At the moment, it is the cheapest form of renewable energy. In this town hall showdown, it's farmer against farmer, local versus local, and even greeny against greeny. Killing, ruining people's life. Out. Now, if you think that green, mate, go back and campaign somewhere else. This is exactly the same battle being fought in many countries. world away in the highlands of central Wales, it's the same argument. They do that and that's why wind energy is the fastest growing source of energy globally because they do it. Gordon James is an energy campaigner with the international conservation group Friends of the Earth. I don't look, agree, I don't accept that look, figure. Uh, well, uh, you uh, won't uh, accept any of the other side figures. Once yeah, these two greenies were brothers in arms, but Professor Bellamy's opposition to wind farms has made them implacable foes. So why start with wind in a beautiful place like this? We start in your national forest. Well, I don't have to use you. I'm Welsh. I'm local. Don't you come here and tell me what I should do with my countryside. I love the Welsh countryside. I love uh, the Welsh culture. And a lot of people who are passionate Welshmen support wind energy. Kevin Crease is the latest and biggest wind farm in Wales in an area that literally bristles with turbines. Mushrooming through the alpine heathlands and along ancient droving paths, hundreds of steel towers pierce the sky. They're part of a vast network of almost 2,000 windmills across Britain that generates probably not much more than 1% of the nation's power. They're planning about 800 more. They are planning thousands for the spine, the heart of Mid Wales. They're ripping out the heart of Mid Wales. Dr Kay Little is an English settler, while Bryn Mawr Morgan is an eighth-generation Welsh hill farmer. They see themselves as custodians of one of Wales' last wild areas. This is the mountain stronghold of the Red Kite riding the same westerly blasts that the wind farmers wish to tame. I think people are just being brainwashed, but the bottom line is there is a tremendous landscape impact of such a development, and I think that the chickens are coming home to roost before long, and people will realise the errors of the way. Driving the push for wind power and the government subsidies it generates is the world concern about global warming. Our planet is heating up faster than ever before and already we're seeing the consequences in wild and erratic weather. Coal-fired power stations have been singled out as a major source of greenhouse gases. If we go on doing what we're doing, we cross a threshold. And once past that threshold, the world just goes on warming up, even if we become absolutely squeaky clean from that moment onwards. It'll go on warming up so that all the ice of Greenland and much of it in West Antarctica melt, and then most of civilization will be underwater. Now that's the thing that's going to kill not just a few thousand, but probably billions of people. Professor James Lovelock is one of the world's leading environmental scientists. This distinguished British researcher warns a climate clock is already at five minutes to midnight. Now, in Australia, we're being told that wind power is one of the answers. I wish it were, but it's not. Uh, at the best, wind power can not provide more than a tiny fraction of the energy needs of civilization, It's a nice idea, it looks good, it's showy. I think it's one of those things politicians like because it can be seen that they're doing something, but in practice it's not really a useful remedy.
If the answer isn't blowing in the wind, then could it be found here? So let's pop that in. Enter authorization code. It's with some trepidation that I've come to visit Britain's Sizewell nuclear station. Pass through the barrier. For me, its forbidding presence conjures up memories of the horrors of Chernobyl and Three Mile Island. It seems almost heresy to think that here could be a solution to our energy crisis. Well, considering all the security I've gone through to get here, it looks fairly benign, doesn't it? But in fact, finally, I've got to the top of the pile, the nuclear pile, that is. I am standing on the top of a working nuclear reactor. And it's a very different story because a growing number of scientists in Britain today are saying that global warming as a consequence of our profligate use of oil and coal is in fact a greater and more present danger and that rather than fearing nuclear power, we should actually be embracing it as a solution. We're a bit like the Victorians were about Dracula and ghosts and things like that. We built up a fear of, almost a superstitious fear of things nuclear that is far beyond reality. It's not particularly dangerous. Excellent wind regime. Back in Australia, and nuclear is very much a land. dirty word. The turbines start on the top of the hill. Yeah. Here at Bald Hills in Gippsland, Lindsay Marriott is in for quite a windfall if his eight wind towers are built, as much as $80,000 a year in royalties from the power company. But this might make you a pariah with your, uh, with your neighbours. Charles, I go out in the community regularly and I speak to a lot of people all the time who tell me I'm doing the right thing. But not all his neighbours are happy. Grazier Rob Lilly will overlook the wind farm and he's devastated. It's going to be in my face all day. This is my workplace. This is where, this is where I work and my staff work. The only time it's not going to be in our face is when we're in the house. Is this a matter of NIMBY, though? Not in my backyard? Oh, of course it's NIMBY. Oh, you admit I, it? I, yeah, I'm a card-carrying member. Fully paid up. Don't worry about that. If I don't look after my backyard, who's going to? This turbulent debate is far from over. And worldwide, the turbines continue their inexorable march across the countryside. Whether it's science or subsidy, environmentalism or nimbyism, be it Gippsland or Wales, the wind blows strongest in the most beautiful places, and so does the argument. I know Merlin the wizard is no longer here in Wales, but maybe one of these days, these constructions, these turbines will just snap in half and come tumbling down on the ground and by God that will be hallelujah hallelujah hello I'm Tara Brown thanks for watching 60 minutes Australia subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week and don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9Now app.